Sure. Let me, uh, like everybody else, uh, thank The Economist uh, for the invitation to, to be here. It's a, a real pleasure, and it's also great to see so many old friends from, from Greece and Cyprus, some of whom I, I haven't seen in, in a couple of years. Uh, what I wanted to, to do is, is talk a little bit more broadly about the, the geopolitical context, and in particular focus on, on how this is being seen from, from the U.S. Uh, there's been a lot of talk throughout the, the morning about how we're in a, a fairly unique moment, and it's a moment that, that people couldn't have necessarily envisioned us being in a, a couple of years ago. Uh, and I think that there are a number of things that have contributed to this over the last couple of years. Uh, I served in the Obama administration in the State Department, and from 2013 to 2016 uh, was the Deputy Assistant Secretary responsible for Southern Europe and the Eastern Med, uh, and so got to work directly on, on U.S. policy towards Turkey, Greece, and, and Cyprus. Uh, and so I'd like to, to in starting, give a, a little bit of credit to the Obama administration for laying some of the framework that I think has, has led to, to where we are now. Uh, there was certainly a lot of engagement by the Trump administration with, with Turkey, uh, which during that time period started uh, moving in a, a more complicated direction. Uh, there was a huge amount of support from the Obama administration to Greece during the financial crisis, uh, including President Obama himself and conversations with German Chancellor Merkel. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew and others, and I think some of that really ended up contributing to a, a much more positive attitude in, in Greece, uh, including among the, the general population toward the position of, of the United States. Uh, and certainly there was also active involvement in the, the peace process in, in Cyprus, uh, including by Secretary of State Kerry and, and Vice President Biden, who, who made a historic trip to the, the, the island. Uh, the Trump administration, I certainly will be among the, the first to say that I have been critical of many aspects of their foreign policy, but the policy of the Trump administration toward the Eastern Med, I think, is one of the positives of this administration and is something that they have done very, very well and something that they deserve a lot of credit on. Uh, former Assistant Secretary in the State Department, Wes Mitchell, who was responsible for the region and, until he left a couple months ago, uh, certainly recognized the geostrategic importance of the Eastern Mediterranean and invested a lot of time and thought in trying to strengthen American ties with these countries and build, as, as I would argue, on, on some of the groundwork that has been, been laid in the past. Uh, from my perspective, there's about four drivers that I see that are leading the U.S. to, to be looking much more closely at strengthening ties with the Eastern Med. The first is certainly a recognition of the importance of the, the geostrategic region and the importance of having geostrategic stability in the Eastern Med. When you look around at a lot of the, the immediate neighbors of, of Greece and, and Cyprus, we've had conflict in, in Syria, we've had renewed conflict in Iraq, there was the rise of the Islamic State, there had been a war in, in Libya, there's, there's things happening around the, the Gulf, and so really having an island of stability in that part of the, the Eastern Med and strong partners for the United States in economic, political, and military terms is incredibly important. Second, Turkey, I, as people have been talking about throughout the morning, is, is moving in an increasingly worrying direction. Uh, there have been a lot of the crackdowns following the coup. There's complications in, in the American relationship in Syria, including disputes over U.S. partnership with the YPG, uh, and also the dispute uh, that's, that's going on over Turkey's planned purchase of the S-400s, which I think is really pitting the U.S. and, and Russia against each other in a struggle for the, the future direction of, of Turkey in many ways. Third, I think we're seeing a much greater desire um, Sorry. I, I, from, I think there's some feedback if, if um, the conference organizers can help out with that. That would be great. Sounds like picking up some alternative programming, but we're all listening to you, Amanda. <laughs> thought I was starting to hear voices in my own head. <laughs> it's good to know it's the rest of you, too. Uh, the third thing that I was going to say is, is a much greater rec willingness on the part of, of Greece and Cyprus uh, to, to partner with the United States in, in this way. Uh, as I said, I think there was goodwill that was built up in the American relationship with Greece coming out of the financial crisis. There was a lot of positive will that was, was built up with Cyprus. And so there's a desire by both of these countries, I think, to have much closer ties with the United <coughs> States, including in, in military terms by, by both of them. And then fourth, we're also seeing a much greater degree of influence by Russia as well as China uh, within the region. And there is a desire to have alternative energy routes there. 
Uh, so the U.S. commitment, I think, has been very clearly demonstrated, as, as Assistant Secretary Fannin was saying, by, by Secretary of State Pompeo's decision to attend the energy trilateral uh, in March. And I think you are also seeing this coming out of, of Congress. Uh, I'm sure people are aware of the recent bill that was introduced by Senator Menendez and Senator Rubio, uh, which really is, is trying to support, I think, a lot of what the administration was doing in, in political terms and add additional robustness to that. Uh, if you look at what it is doing, it tries to increase security cooperation. It tries to increase energy cooperation. Uh, it authorizes the establishment of the U.S. Eastern Mediterranean Energy Center to facilitate this energy cooperation. Uh, requires lots of, of reports, which the State Department always hates, but, but looking at degrees of Russian interference in the, the region, looking at ways to cooperate more closely on, on energy. And so I think this momentum that you're seeing from within the U.S. administration is also certainly being shared by many within the, the U.S. Congress as well. Uh, final point, and again, it echoes much of what's been said before, is that there's a lot of challenges to this. I, certainly the, the lack of a, a political settlement to the, the the, the, the peace process in, in Cyprus is a, a detriment. You know, the U.S. government has always been, been supportive of Cyprus's right to explore its resources within its EEZ. Uh, we've always talked a lot about the need for equitable sharing of resources, which I know both sides agree. Uh, but the reality is once we get to the point of, of monetizing those resources, the lack of a political settlement is something that we are going to have to confront. Uh, and certainly, as people have been saying in, in the other sessions, the continued reality of this political trajectory of Turkey is something that we're also going to have to continue to deal with.